This is video 5E, the end of module 5. I think I may have told you that there was going to be up to video 5F, but I'm hoping to get it all in in 5E. Okay, we're going to start with another problem. Example 5.7 on page 152. It says, a chemist determines that a sample of pure ammonia, NH3, contains 12.331 moles of NH3. What is the mass of the sample? Okay, so we want to find, this is example 5.7, and we are looking for the mass of NH3 in this sample. So the mass is gonna be in grams. How many grams of NH3? So again, we start with what we know. How many moles do we have? Remember, moles tells us how many actual molecules of NH3 are present. And the problem tells us that we have 12.331 moles of NH3. Okay, we want to use the factor label method to get to grams. So grams is gonna go on the top, moles is going to go on the bottom so that our answer ends up in grams because the two moles will cancel out. So, do we have a relationship? Do we know how many grams are in how many moles of NH3? Let's see, we do. There's a place we can look that tells us how much one mole weighs. Do you remember how to find that? It is the molecular mass of NH3. So if we look at, here, let's write that down. The molecular mass of NH3 is going to tell us how much one mole weighs. Okay, looking at the periodic table, we need to look at nitrogen. The periodic table tells us that in one mole of nitrogen, it's going to weigh 14.0 grams. So we've got nitrogen at 14.0 grams plus three hydrogens. How much does a mole of hydrogen weigh? A mole of hydrogen weighs 1.01 grams. So plus three times 1.01 grams. Okay, so if we multiplied that and, and uh, added it together, we would get 17.0 grams of NH3. Okay, so one mole, this equals 17.0 grams of NH3 equals one mole of NH3. That's how much a mole weighs, okay? Going back to where I figured out the molecular mass, we have three significant figures here. Three is an exact integer. We're just talking about how many um, hydrogen molecules there were, so that doesn't figure into significant figures. And here we have Oh, we're adding, we're adding. So we have to go to the least precise decimal place. So here we go to the 10th decimal place. Here we have to the 100th decimal place, but our answer can only go to the 10th decimal place. So that's why I came up with 17.0 grams of NH3, okay? So here we figured out the relationship. So now we need to plug that into the factor label method that we had set up up above. So we now know that one mole of NH3 is equal to, thank you to the periodic table, 17.0 grams of NH3, okay? The moles are gonna cancel out. We're gonna put that into our calculators, 12.331 times 17.0 equals 210 grams of NH3. Now let's check significant figures, okay? Significant figures, we have five here, but we only have three here. So our answer can have and must have three significant figures. This answer only has two significant figures, but if we rewrite it in scientific notation, 2.10 times 10 to the second then it has one, two, three significant figures, okay? Uh, grams of NH3. 
And that is how we come up with that answer. So that's example 5.7. Okay, moving on to a new section in module five. Using the mole concept in chemical equations. A chemical equation is basically a recipe. It's telling us what reactants need to be present in order to produce what products. Okay, so take this chemical equation for example. CH4 plus 2O2 yields CO2 and 2H2O, which you guys should recognize as a complete combustion reaction. What this tells us is uh, if we're looking at the coefficients out front, we're gonna be talking about the coefficients now for a minute, okay? Uh, let me use my red marker. The coefficients out front Uh, let me back up for a minute. Let me read this other section for you. Okay, so this chemical equation is telling us that one molecule of CH4 and two molecules of O2 will make one molecule of CO2 and two molecules of H2O. Okay, so we're focusing in on the coefficients and what exactly those tell us. Keep in mind that the coefficients tell us how many molecules are present. They don't tell us how much the molecules weigh. It doesn't tell us how much the reactants weigh at the beginning and how much the products weigh at the end. Okay? It tells us how many. Think about a recipe. Okay? Let's say we have two eggs and one cup of water and one cake mix because we love to talk about cakes don't we when we're talking about recipes we could say yield one cake okay so the coefficients out front of this recipe tell us how many are present we need two eggs doesn't tell us how much the eggs weigh tells us how many eggs we need one cup of water. We don't know how much the water weighs, but it tells us how much one cup of it, okay? That's gonna be really important for you to understand as we continue to do these uh, math problems involving the coefficients and moles. Okay, jumping down to the next section of notes. The coefficients tell us how many molecules of each substance. So just to reiterate, how many, not how much they weigh. So we can use these coefficients as proportions, okay? If we wanted to double a recipe, we would know that we needed to double each of the coefficients. If I wanted to end up with two cakes, what I did here was I multiplied the coefficient out front by two. Then I would also have to multiply the coefficient out front of my reactants by two. Right? So if I wanted two cakes, I would need four eggs, I would need two cups of water, I would need two cake mixes. Okay? If I wanted to make a dozen cakes, 12 cakes, I would multiply this coefficient times 12, this coefficient times 12, this coefficient times 12, this coefficient times 12. You're getting the picture, aren't you? I know you are. So then, if we make it big enough to talk about atoms, and molecules, what if we wanted to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd the recipe, right? What if we wanted a whole mole of cakes? We would say this times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, this times that big long number, each coefficient times that big number to make a mole of it, okay? The coefficients tell us how many molecules of each substance. Now, if we also think of these as a proportion, as, we, as we've been talking about, the coefficients tell us the proportions that things are needed. Let me add this. The coefficients The coefficients tell us, or can tell us, can tell how many moles 
of each substance is needed. Okay? So just like we were talking about a dozen, if I wanted one dozen cakes, uh, we could use these as proportions and say one dozen cakes, we need one dozen cake mixes, we need one dozen cups of water, we need two dozen eggs. In the same way, we can insert the word mole. If I want one mole of cakes, then I need one mole of cake mixes, I need one mole of cups of water, I need two moles of eggs. See what I'm talking about here? So then, let's switch back to our chemical equation. If I wanted to end up with two moles of water, I would also end up with one mole of carbon dioxide. I would need two moles of oxygen molecules, and I would need one mole of methane. I hope this is making sense. We will go over it in class, okay? Let's try, uh, let's try an example. Example 5.8. The decomposition of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen is described by the following chemical equation. This is on page 154 of your books. 2H2O2 yields 2H2O and O2. If a chemist begins with 2.4 moles of H2O2, how many moles of O2 will be produced? All right, let's first write out the equation. So we are talking about 2H2O2 yields 2H2O and O2. Now what I was trying to express before is that the coefficients out front can tell you how many molecules or it could tell you how many moles because there, it's just kind of a proportion, right? So two moles of H2O2 is going to produce two moles of water and one mole of oxygen. The question is, or what we're looking for is how many moles of O2 are going to be produced. And the problem tells us how much H2O2 we begin with. So if we start with 2.4 moles of H2O2, is that what we're starting with? Yes it is. How many moles of oxygen are going to be produced? Okay, so we're going to use the factor label method again. This time we want to get rid of moles of H2O2, so that's going on the bottom. Moles of H2O2 are going on the bottom. And we want to learn, or we want to find out, how many moles of oxygen, or O2, are going to be produced, okay? So our units go like this. Now, what is the relationship between moles of oxygen and moles of H2O2? Based on this recipe, we can see from the coefficients that for every two moles of H2O2, one mole of O2 is produced. See how you use that proportion? Okay, so if you multiply that out or divide it, the units cancel out. 2.4 essentially divided by two equals 1.2 moles of O2 produced. And that is your answer. I hope you get it. I hope you understand. We are going to do more examples of this in class on Thursday.